All right, since it's probably going to be a whole lot easier to try and convey the problem that I'm solving with Chauffeur via a video rather than just the blog post, um, this is just a quick screencast to kind of demo one of the main things you want to be doing with Chauffeur, which is getting th something from one machine to another. So in this case, I want to talk through a simple scenario that I'm working on a project that, or I'm new to a project that another Enrico developer has already been working on, and I need to get my environment up and running so that I can contribute to the work that's being done. So the, for this scenario, I've, I've got an Abraco website that someone else has already built. It's in source control, and in this case, it's gonna be just a local Git repository because it's all happening on my, my machine, and this fake person is also happening to use my machine. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna be able to it's like get up and running very quickly with the stuff that is happening on my machine without having to you know, go get a database backup from another developer or anything like that. I want everything to happen just through Chauffeur itself. And, and, and it'll kind of illustrate the key point that I'm trying to get across with Chauffeur is how you can just automate these repeatable tasks that we've got to do with Embraco that like setting up a new machine should be a deployment thing. It shouldn't be something that is manual that needs human interactions basically. So I'm just gonna grab a Git repository that I got locally and clone that into my current working directory. All right, there it is, clone, cool, we're done. And let's just open up this folder. All right, so it's lovely named Web Application 37 and open this up in Visual Studio. So like I said, this is a project that I, I could be new to the company that it's on, I could be new to the project that's on, I could be a consultant or a contractor that's come in to work on this project, I, something like that. I, the, the whole idea is that, yeah, this is an existing project that I wanna be contributing to. So as I said, because it's an existing project, someone's already in, done the install. We've got, you know, um, Braco configuration status is already set to 714 because this is the, the version that they're currently running. We've got a connection string down here that um, we're using a SQL CE database. It's just how we're doing our local development rather than a shared server. We're just using a local SQL CE database. But because this has been in source control, I don't want to check in my SQL CE database. So you'll see here in the app data folder, I don't have the embraco.sdf file. So I, I'd have to get that onto my machine and be able to get up and running. But because the developer is using Chauffeur, they've created a delivery script for me. So this is the delivery script that we're gonna be using. Um, the first thing it does is it's gonna install the database. Passing through the Y flag on the end, that um, is useful if you're using SQL CE. It will uh, skip the prompt where it says, hey, do you actually want to create a database because I can't find one on disk. Um, if you're using like SQL Server or something like that, then at the moment you're not able to do um, the full database creation from nothing. Uh, it's a whole lot harder to do an actual create an actual database instance on a remote server um, using .NET than it is to create a SQL CE database. Uh, so th there's currently no support for that scenario. If you do use SQL Server, then obviously what you'd want to do is have the empty um, server level database created, and then Chauffeur can go across and install the uh, Embraco scripts into that. So you can get your Embraco stuff into an empty database or an existing database, however you want to run it. Uh, the second thing it's gonna do is uh, change the password of the default user, so user zero. Um, the default password that Embraco ships is default. Um, you're not really meant to know this, but it's not something that's of very much importance to anyone, uh, but that's the password that they uh, put in there. And they actually install it without any uh, hashing or anything like that. Uh, but because of the way that we've got this project set up, we're using the Embraco user provider. You'll see here that I've got the password format of hashed. So by default, it won't actually hash the password. Um, like the default password that gets inserted by the SQL scripts isn't hashed. So you can't even log in with that password. Uh, so we need to change that password. And the, the normal Embraco installer will do that for you, obviously. It will prompt you for the new password that you want to use for your user account. In this case, I want to just automate that process and I'm going with the super secret password of password. The final thing I want to do is I want to actually set up my basic site structure. So this is the stuff that you would normally be um, creating through the Embraco UI. Um, you might be using Usync or something like that to automate the process. But I want to, I, that's part of, I install my, my build almost, of, like you can consider it for this project. So I've gone and grabbed um, one of the starter kits off our Braco. Uh, if we just open it up, just collapse off some of the uh, other parts 
to it. You see that this is the, the local government starter kit uh, from uh, org. Um, it's got some things like files and document types um, that will get ignored. Um, so files and documents will get ignored as um, part of the package deliverable at the moment. Uh, mainly files will get ignored because they're the sorts of things I expect to be in source control already. It's uh, You shouldn't be adding those via some kind of an install script. That's the kind of stuff that you want to be source controlling uh, or ideally come through a NuGet package. Documents, on the other hand, that's something that is beyond the scope of what Shofar is trying to solve, at least at the moment. Uh, it's not about doing content to um, migrations across environments. It's more about doing uh, environment setup uh, and then migrating changes of um, site structure and that kind of level of change across environments. Documents, leave that to Courier or any of those other tools out there that can do content to content. Um, deployments. This is more about how do you set up environments and how do you how do you source control changes that happen at a database level across those environments without you know checking in a database itself. So yeah, we've got you know document types, uh, we've got templates, we've got style sheets, we've got macros um, somewhere else in here. Yep, there's macros as well. So all these kinds of things we should be able to easily you know, install through um, through Shofar. So that's that's the idea. And as I said, we've got a delivery script that should take care of doing that for us. So I'm gonna be using um, the current nightly, or well, pseudo nightly build of, of Shofar, the latest build from the CI server that I've got running. If you haven't read the blog post about what Shofar is and um, all that kind of stuff, probably should go and read that before um, continue on in this video. It'll make a bit more sense of the, the context of what we're doing with things as well. Um, but it's also got a link out to the CI server, so you can get like the latest builds. Uh, so yeah, this is just build alpha 22 of 0.3.1, and I'm using Brocco uh, 714. So let's just do a compile of this from Visual Studio. So it's gonna go out to NuGet, download all the packages. Uh, it's gonna download you know, our Chauffeur package from the build server, Brocco uh, package, it's gonna set up all, all of that kind of stuff that we can easily automate through NuGet itself. All right, so packages are down. Uh, it's actually building the project, obviously putting all the, the files in the bin folder and all that kind of logical stuff. Now, if I was to say run this uh, from Visual Studio, you would expect this to be the, well, no pages found, but it's also gonna kind of freak out because we don't have a database. So according to the web config, like, we're all set up, but we actually don't have the database on disk. So now it's kind of freaked out a little bit. It's, it, it thinks it should be further down the, uh, path than it actually is. So let's kill that off and jump over to my PowerShell instance here and we'll go to the right folder and let's see here we've got Shofar is in the bin folder. So we've got Shofar in the, the, con the console runner for Shofar itself. So let's just run up Shofar and we'll pass it the delivery command. So I want Shofar to take the take all the delivery scripts that I've um, created, and in this case is only the single one, and then execute those. So if we run that off, first thing it's gonna do is um, set up our database. So there we go, it's set up our database, it's changed our user, and now it's just importing all the things um, sequentially from the package script that we had. So it's setting up our document types, our templates, our macros and, and data types, and so on and so forth. So here we go momentarily we finished there we go it's done um because this was the first run and i didn't have a database it didn't have a tracking table to be able to test to see whether or not a delivery had previously been executed uh it, it's now able to um set that up so i actually track the delivery packages that are executed so that it doesn't re-execute them again so if i was to run that command again it will tell me that um yeah 01-demo has already been signed for so i'm not going to re-execute that so i can like keep hitting this uh, uh, this command again and again and again and it's going to skip all the ones that have previously been executed all right so now if we jump back to visual studio and we'll just refresh Solution Explorer, oh, collapse off a whole bunch of stuff that I don't need. And here we go, so now we have our Braco SDF file. So this time if I run it up in my browser,
you'll see that we'll actually get to the no content page because I don't have any content. I've all I've done is I've scripted up my instance to be completely empty. So momentarily as IS Express spins up and all that fun stuff. There we go. Cool. Now let's go and set up my database. So I've previous demo um, or like testing around to make sure this would work. I'd previously logged in to make sure that you know, I could actually log in. So it didn't look silly when we did it. So I kind of skipped that login process just then. Um, but now if we jump settings, document types, here we go. So right, we've now got our database right, set up correctly. We've got our root document type. We've got our, like the children of that. It's understood hierarchy. If I come into this, you'll see that I've got uh, properties that are defined on on it. So I've got the Embraco Navi Hide as um, on this one. If you jump onto content, you'll see that that's got its own set of um, properties. We've got a whole series of templates that have been set up. Um, this particular one has uh, like certain templates allowed for it. I'm sure, maybe not uh, not fully familiar with this um, one out of the box. Uh, but yeah, we, we can have a look at our templates. See, so it's obviously calling out to Razor. I can jump over and I got a whole bunch of macros that are created. I've got data types that are created. I, uh, all the custom data types have been imported. So all of that kind of stuff that you know we normally you, you've got these manual processes of um, like importing through the the Embraco packager or like you manually click through the, all the various um, steps to create them yourself or uh, you use USIC, but it doesn't happen until the first um, web request is is issued to actually do all this install. This stuff we can all do before we even um, spin up IS the first time. So it means that we actually have this as part of a deployment. It's not a post-deployment step. Uh, we, finally, we could always uh, we can come back to Shofar and I'll just boot up the console itself. Uh, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of things uh, available uh, that I can do, such as you know. Um, generating packages, uh, importing more packages. So I can I can just use this as kind of a, a REPL environment almost. Uh, it's not full REPL, um, but I can just you know execute commands and, and see how they, they work. Um, I could do something like uh, CT uh, get all, so get all the content types that are uh, currently in the system. So here we go, that's gonna take a few seconds while it you know, hits the Embraco API, pulls all the information back, and then we build up uh, a list of information that we're gonna write out to the screen. So you can, you can from a command line, do also do some sort of an, uh, analysis of, of what your Embraco instance has within it. So there we go, cool. Uh, you'll see, here's all the document types that I've got inside of my system. There's all their IDs, uh, there's their name and their alias. Uh, I've got some formatting issues, as, as you can see. It's kind of hard to <laughs> format something on a, on a console window like this consistently. It's uh, not, not particularly pretty. Um, I can you know, get a specific one, uh, 1077. There we go. So you'll see it's the root document type. Um, it doesn't have a parent. It's got some property types on it called Embraco Navi Hide, and that's the information. And there's the data type ID. It's not a mandatory one here. So yeah, as you see, some useful little analytics that we can do also off the bat um, with Shofar as well. So I'm quite excited about this. I think it's a it's a really interesting step forward in the way that we can do deployments, that we can do this sort of automation um, from it. I, obviously, I came to a command line and, and did Shofar deliver. You can think you have like a bat file that sits at the root of your uh, Git repository or whatever your SCM is. Um, that on the build server or like as an Octopus deploy step, if you're using Octopus deploy or like as part of uh, an Azure website setup, it runs this build.bat um, file. That then goes, executes all the deliveries that have never been run against this current environment and gets your environment from version A to version B without you having to start up the website, do any kind of manual interaction and ultimately um, have the, the potential fallacy that is just human-based interactions with any kind of deployment process. Thanks for watching.